Hello, my name is Gary Fritz, WB9LIB. I'm with the Potoka Valley Amateur Radio Club located in southwest Indiana. I recently decided to give FT8 a try to see just how much fun I could have working stations around the country and around the world using this weak digital signal mode of operation. While setting up and using FT8 and its associated programs, including WSJTX, Grid Tracker, and the N3FJP Logger, I become quite familiar with the software and its capabilities. And some of those capabilities can be quite useful when operating FT8. So I'm going to give you a brief tour of my FT8 setup, highlighting some of the procedures and settings that I've been using that have been very useful to my FT8 operations. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. First off, I'd like to point out that while Grid Tracker is a powerful add-on program for WSJTX with lots of powerful features, it is not a logging program. And while WSJTX, the core FT8 program, maintains a simple text-based log along with an ADA file of all your contacts, it also is not a logging program. So just how are you supposed to reliably log your FT8 contacts? That is best done using an actual logging program such as the N3FJP Amateur Contact Log. Now while you could manually log your contacts into N3FJP while running FT8 and then periodically upload those contacts to Logbook of the World, QRZ, and EQSL, that would be a bit labor intensive and in reality it is not really necessary. There is a much better solution. WSJTX, Grid Tracker, and N3FJP can be configured to automate the entire logging process. That includes automatically logging all of your contacts into N3FJP Amateur Contact Log, and that also includes automatically uploading those contacts over the internet into Logbook of the World, QRZ, and EQSL immediately after they are logged. All you need to do is enable these features and you are good to go. In this episode, I'll show you exactly how that is done. First, let's set up WSJTX to enable automatic contact logging into the N3FJP Amateur Contact Log. Go ahead and open up WSJTX. Then go to File, Settings. Go to the Reporting tab and make sure all the selections on this screen are set up. That includes Prompt Me to Log QSO, which produces a pop-up window reminding you to log the QSO once it's completed. Also enable PSK Reporter Spotting. And very importantly, under the UDP Server section, make sure the server is set to 127.0.0.1. Make sure the port number is set to 2237. And also make sure you have Accept UDP Request selected, along with Notify on Accepted UDP Request, as well as Accepted UDP Request Restores window. Now let's set up N3FJP for automatic logging. Open up the N3FJP Amateur Contact Log. Go to Settings. Select Application Program Interface and make sure you have Listen for WSJTX selected. Click on Configure and make sure the IP address is set to 127.0.0.1 and also make sure the port is set at 2333. Now let's set up Grid Tracker for automatic logging. With WSJTX running, open up Grid Tracker, go to Settings, go to the General tab, Receive UDP messages should show that Grid Tracker is actively receiving updates from WSJTX and the port should be set to 2237. Now go to the Logging tab and go down to N3FJP Loggers and make sure you have Startup selected and also make sure you have Log selected. 
That turns on automatic logging into N3FJP and also loads the N3FJP log, that's the ADA file, at startup. With that completed, WSJTX and Grid Tracker will now talk to each other. Now we're going to enable automatic logging into Logbook of the World, QRZ, and EQSL. You do need to have accounts with these services for this to work. While in Grid Tracker, go to Settings, go to the Logging tab, and then go down to the QRZ line. Make sure you have Startup enabled as well as Log enabled. You need to put your API key in for this service, then press Test to make sure it's working, and indeed it is. This enables automatic logging to QRZ and loads the QRZ contact log at startup. Next, let's go down to the EQSL line. Make sure you have log enabled. You do need to put in your user ID and password for this service. Then press test to make sure it's working, and indeed it is. This enables automatic logging of contacts into the EQSL. Now let's go down to Logbook of the World and make sure you have Startup and Log selected for this service. You do need to put in your user ID and password, then click Test Download to make sure it's working. This enables automatic logging to Logbook of the World and loads the Logbook of the World contact log at Startup. That completes all the setups needed to automatically upload contacts to Logbook of the World, QRZ and EQSL immediately after they are logged. Alright, now that we have everything set up for automatic logging, let's give it a try. See if we can find a station calling CQ. Looks like we got one right here. Let's go ahead and click on him. Alright, now we're transmitting. Takes about 15 seconds, of course. And just about complete. And let's see if we get a response. Just about done. And indeed we do. Notice the pop-up window. Go ahead and clear that. We're transmitting back to N3QXC, giving him our signal report. Now we should be getting a signal report back from him. Just a little bit more to go. And indeed, we have Roger, Roger, 73. Notice the box pops up. For automatic logging the QSO, simply put in the power level, click OK, and by golly, we are done. At this point, our contact has been loaded into the N3FJP Amateur Contact Log. It was also uploaded to Logbook of the World, QRZ, and EQSL. Well, folks, that completes this episode of the virtual tour of my FT-8 setup. Hopefully what I presented to you will help streamline your FT-8 operations. So until we meet again, have a great time exploring and using FT-8.